As we look at the present landscape, the world of technology, especially in business analysis, it continues to confront new hurdles and innovations daily. My first job was in tech support, so that's where I started. It's so crucial to stay abreast of these evolutions, not only survive, but thrive in the digital age. A lot of companies now are doing like what we call enterprise resource systems right. where everything is talking to each other. I, I no longer have to log in here or log in over there for, for different things. Everything is a one-stop shop. Kim's experiences serve as inspiration to all of us, especially to young women aspiring to enter or excel in the tech field. Welcome to Lipstick and Cyber Podcast brought to you by F12.net. I'm your host, Mahin, and I'm thrilled to have you join us for this exciting journey where technology meets business in the most dynamic and engaging way. In each episode, we dive deep into the world of cybersecurity, digital transformation, and innovation, sharing insights, stories, and strategies from industry leaders and experts. So whether you're a seasoned tech professional or just curious about the digital landscape, Lipstick and Cyber Podcast by F12.net is your go-to resource for staying ahead in the ever-evolving tech world. Today we have a fantastic episode lined up for you, so sit back, relax, and get ready to be inspired and informed. And uh, let's get started. So joining us today for this episode is Kimberly Stinnett, a seasoned business analyst with a decade of expertise in information technology service management and health informatics. Uh, Kimberly has navigated through complex digital networks, spearheaded IT service management improvements, and championed cybersecurity measures across various sectors. With Kimberly's dynamic background, we are all set to uncover valuable strategies and personal insights that can help entrepreneurs and tech professionals alike navigate their digital landscapes more effectively. Hi, Kimberly. Welcome to the show. How are you today? I am good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Very wonderful to have someone with, uh, you know, the depth of your experience and knowledge because it can provide from through your journey into the tech world, uh, you know, it can offer um, great insights to our to our listeners because they can learn a lot from your expertise and they can navigate the evolving world of IT, uh, you know, resources in a much better way. Um, so, you know, including myself, like we all will be very eager to hear from your expertise and journey today. Okay. Okay. Looking forward to it. <laughs> looking forward to it too. <laughs> now, as we begin our conversation, Kimberly, uh, you know, we are very intrigued, particularly myself. I'm very intrigued to hear about your path mm -hmm. into the world of IT and business analysis. Um, can you please share a bit more about your journey into the IT industry and what inspired you to become an analyst? Okay, well, I always knew that I would be an engineer of some sort. Um, in high school, I, you know, moved more to the science STEM courses. And so when I was going through my journey of selecting, like, what I'm going to do, my career path, what I'm going to do for university, um, I ventured towards, like, physics and math and stuff like that. And then I briefly... Um, briefly did uh, like physics and engineering courses but I found, found that I we did computing courses as well and I found that there was just a little bit more passion and enthusiasm for the computing so I decided to switch my major to computer science and then um, from there you know you start out you finish school my first job was in tech support <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so that's where I started and just doing tech support and you know system administration, supporting all these applications and te different technologies. And I started to find that I had a knack for figuring out how things work and how, you know, business processes, workflows. And I found that if, you know, I feel like I would be a better fit in um, going into the business analysis side of things. And that's what prompted me to to um, go that route. <laughs> wow, and it's quite uh, wonderful to hear about, you know, uh, each guest's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, inspiration and motivation to begin where they are at today. Yeah. And now over, with over 20 years of experience in the, in the tech world, um, how have you seen the role of business analyst evolve? Um, so I think like earlier on, most business analysts were not technical people. Mm -hmm. They were more from the business end. But I think business of, businesses have, um, organizations have realized that um, people with technical background are, you know, more proficient, efficient um, in the business. You know how the technology works. It's not just a matter of having like that high level overview, but you actually know how things work, um, the intricacies of um, programming and stuff like that. So 
they started to call for more people with tech-related backgrounds, I, I have found. So you have more people within IT transitioning to business analy- analysis and also like project management and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Whereas before, it was mostly people that were on the business side of things that were in those roles. So that's one one big thing difference I've found. Right. Now your journey truly highlights the evolution and the expanding scope of IT roles for mm-hmm. sure. Now Kimberly, having been at the forefront of IT over two decades, uh, you know, you've had a front row seat uh, to some of the most transformative changes in the industry. Um, what are some of the biggest advancements in IT that you've experienced? Um, one of the biggest things I would say is like um, integration. Mm. Usually you're in a company and you have like 10 different software doing 10 different things. A lot of companies now are doing like what we call enterprise resource systems right. where everything is you know talking to each other <laughs> i no longer have to log in here or log in over there for, for different things everything's kind of a one-stop shop right and um well of course you can't talk about technology improvement if you don't speak about artificial intelligence mm-hmm. so <laughs> um that's another big part and I'm not a, I'm not against artificial intelligence, but I do think it needs to be used smartly. smartly. <laughs> yeah, don't Most let definitely. it don't let it get ahead of us. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's quite clear that cybersecurity element of AI, right. uh, you know, has become um, a cornerstone of a lot of business strategies these right. days. Let's take a moment here to reflect. For everyone listening, think about the technological transformations we've discussed. Kimberly just highlighted some pivotal advancements in IT that have reshaped business analysis. So think about questions like how do these changes impact your own business or your role within your industry because it's so crucial to stay abreast of these evolutions not only survive but thrive in the digital age um but as we look at the present landscape uh you know the world of technology especially in business analysis it continues to uh, you know confront new hurdles Mm -hmm. and uh, innovations daily um kimberly what are the most pressing challenges that business analysts faces today uh, especially in cybersecurity. Right. So it's all about process improvement and optimization. And so one of the biggest challenges is people coming in with unreal expectations, um, thinking that like software engineering is some form of like magic. Mm. <laughs> like we can just wave a wand and everything is good. And um, as I said, unrealistic expectations, um, asking for things that are just not possible, like, Technically, tech, right. tech, tech. Um, so, you know, meeting, massaging people's expectations is is one of the most difficult things. Just sometimes they're just stubborn. Right. <laughs> like, why can't it do that? Because it's just not possible. <laughs> you know, the technology is not at a point where that we can facilitate that that ask. That yeah. ask for sure. No, understanding these challenges really help. Um, you know, other entrepreneurs. Uh, it can help listeners really prepare and innovate in their own fields. Now, could you discuss because you've been working for so long in this in the space? Um, like, can you discuss a project, the recent project that, uh, where cybersecurity played a very crucial role? Well, for instance, <laughs> I can speak about the Microsoft. Um, down the the crowd strike. <laughs> Um, so, um, most, most people use a Microsoft plat- platform, mm-hmm. um, or main systems were not down, but we do have like secondary applications and, uh, we weren't able to log, log in. Right. And, um, but realizing what the issue was, you know, you wake up one morning, you wake up in the morning, you're just not able to log in. You're thinking, oh my goodness, did I forget my password? Right. Um, then you realize that it's a bigger problem. And so cybersecurity comes into play where you realize that you can't just like push things. Things need to be tested. People need to be, you know, informed, <laughs> like, you know, appropriately so. So, um, at, you know, it, as I said, like, for, for me, like, you can't just push an update. Mm-hmm. Things need to be tested in different environments before it goes to production, goes live. And, um, yeah, you have to see how different systems, how something might affect um, systems in, you know, various times and right. environments. So This has been an enlightening discussion so far with Kimberly. So we're going to take a quick break. and uh, But before we return, we will delve into more strategies uh, for small businesses to enhance their cybersecurity and explore the progress of gender equality in the tech industry. So please stay tuned. 
Discover the power behind Canadian small and medium businesses with Canadian SME Small Business Magazine, your ultimate resource for success. Join a thriving community of entrepreneurs shaping the future of Canadian business. From insightful articles and expert interviews to our exclusive podcast series, we connect brands and entrepreneurs through our exclusive events, the Small Business Summit, the Small Business Show, and the prestigious Canadian SME National Business Awards, where we celebrate Canadian business success. We equip SMBs with the right tools, knowledge, and opportunities to elevate their business. Stay ahead of the curve with the latest industry trends and insights. Subscribe now at CanadianSME.ca and take the next step towards empowering your business to thrive. Canadian SME empowering Canadian businesses every step of the way. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we've been having a fascinating conversation with Kimberly uh, about the current trends and challenges in the IT industry. Let's continue by discussing some practical strategies for businesses and important societal shifts within the tech world. It also makes us realize that in our digital first world, um, data security has become so crucial. Mm -hmm. Securing that it has become you know more crucial than ever before. Right. Um, given your extensive experience in business analytics, what strategies would you recommend to small businesses to enhance their cybersecurity from a business analyst perspective? Um, I have a. I feel like you should like all check and double check, recheck. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, you get an email that you're not so sure about before you respond and give it out, give out any critical information. Just double check with someone. Um, hey, you know, I got this email. Did you send it? Or, mm -hmm. you know, what is what is it about? Give me more information so I can better understand what it's right. about before, you know, responding and leaking out any, you know, critical, private cri yeah. Yeah, information. Yeah. No, offering solutions like these can really help small yeah. businesses stay secure. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Yeah. Now, let's kind of shift our focus to women in tech, because turning our focus to, you know, um, to a topic which is very close to many, <laughs> you know, women in technology is is very crucial now mm -hmm. to, to help uh, keep the spaces more inclusive, more diverse. Um, your journey is not just uh, as a personal success story, but also as a beacon for many inspiring women entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. you know, especially in tech. So let's hear more into this particular element. From your experience, uh, Kimberly, what progress have you seen in the tech industry regarding gender equality? Um, well, <laughs> I remember when I was just starting out. And so when I tell people this, they're shocked but there was a time when there was pay disparity. And I feel right. like there still is in some degree. Here in Canada, I know that there was a rule passed a few years ago where right. equal equal work, equal pay. So it's not as, you know, the, the landscape isn't as bad here. But yeah, like you're, you, you speak with your colleagues, you're doing the same job and only to find out that they're making more money than you. Mm. Um, they get more recognition than you. <laughs> um, I mean, sometimes... They're more vocal in what they're doing, yes. And as a woman, I, fi I find that we're more, like we sink into the background more easily. Like, more you know, easily. we don't, we feel like we're just doing our job and we're, do we're doing what we're supposed to do. So why brag about something that I should be doing? Mm -hmm. Whereas I find that some of our male co counterparts, they're doing, they're barely doing anything, but they're shouting it from the, <laughs> from the, <laughs> the hill, top, the, of the, hills, yes. <laughs> top of the mountain. <laughs> So, I mean, in that regard, yes, I guess we can be more outspoken about what we're doing and what our achievements are and be proud of ourselves right. and, you know, yeah, market ourselves and, yeah. No, it's always insights like these that, you know, provide encouragement and direction yeah. to the to the next generation of women in tech, for sure. And now let's take a moment to appreciate the strides being made towards gender equality in tech, a cause close to many of our hearts. Kim's experiences serve as inspiration to all of us, especially to young women aspiring to enter or excel in the tech field. How can we as a community further support and encourage diversity in our workspaces? Each of us has a role to play in building a more inclusive industry. So you know, before we wrap up the conversation, of, you know, thank you for making it so engaging. And, uh, you know, before we let you go, we'd like to have a quick rapid fire. Um, let me know when, whenever you're ready, we will begin. Let's go. Okay. Uh, question number one. Uh, Kimberly, would you rather start your day with a strong cup of coffee or a refreshing morning skincare routine? Definitely coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's me too. That, that, I cannot live without my coffee. It's so important <laughs> to keep my head clear. Right. Question two. Do you prefer a bold lipstick or lip gloss for a confidence boost or a sleek tech gadget for productivity? I'm 
Who wants a gadget? Gadget? <laughs> yes. I doubt it, but okay. I can see a very good lip, talk, uh, lip gloss that you're wearing. Um, what's your go-to lip gloss or lipstick, if you don't mind? I do prefer like a, a nice nude. Nude, yeah. yes. Nudes are something yes. that's trending. Yeah. Very nice. I like that. Do you find more joy in exploring new beauty trends or discovering the latest tech innovations? It's a it's a fifty fifty yeah it depends on the on the on the, the day and the mood. Yeah. I think for me these days has become like you know there's a lot of competition right. especially with the celebrities getting their beauty tra- beauty right? uh, business out. <laughs> you can't so keep up. you can't keep up anymore. And what's good? What's yeah. not? There has to be a lot of research. But social media is really helping right. keep up with that, right? Yeah. Uh, do you enjoy getting ready with the latest beauty products or setting up the newest tech devices? I do like setting up new gadgets. New gadgets. I like I like to figure out how things work and um yeah, so for me it's setting up the gadget. Yeah. I think for myself as well. I like exploring you yes. know, new new gadgets. Okay, so do you find last question, do you find it more exciting to try a new hairstyle or try out the latest software update? Um it might be the hairstyle on that one. Yes. <laughs> Okay, we like we like a good balance yes. between you know exploring beauty trends or uh, the IT stuff. Really, thank you so much for making this so engaging and so insightful for our audience today. And uh, your your success stories were just you know too motivational for our listeners to take a you know great peaks from. So thank you so much for your time again. Thank you so much. You made it very easy and enjoyable. So thanks for having me again. <laughs> That's all for today's episode of Lipstick and Cyber Podcast brought to you by F12.net. We hope that you enjoyed the conversation and gained valuable insights to apply in your own journey through the tech world. A big thank you to our sponsor F12.net for their continued support in making this podcast possible. Their dedication to empowering businesses with cutting edge ID solutions truly makes a difference. Please don't forget to subscribe to our podcast, leave a review and share it with your friends and colleagues. Um, You can also follow us on our social media channels in the description of the podcast to stay updated on the upcoming episodes and exclusive content. Again, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Lipstick and Cyber. Until then, keep exploring, innovating and staying secure.